Good afternoon. Welcome to Live at the Museum at the National Museum of Australia. My name's Penny and I work with the Lifelong Learning team here at the National Museum. And today I'm joined by Matilda. Hi. And Martin, who are Hi. part of our retail team here at the National Museum. Before I introduce them in detail, I would, as always, like to perform an acknowledgement of country. We're filming today on the lands of the Ngunnawal, Ngunnawal and Ngambri people of Canberra. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And I would also like to extend that respect to any and all First Nations people here present and watching via the live stream. It's actually a nice segue into talking about today's program. We're talking about ethical and sustainable sourcing in the museum shop. Uh, and I'm joined by Martin and Matilda. I will get them to introduce themselves. I think we might start with Matilda, if that's okay. Sure. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Matilda. Hi, I'm Matilda. I'm one of the retail assistants here at the National Museum shop. Um, and I've worked here for about three years. Cool. And uh, Martin. Hey everyone, I'm Martin. I'm also a retail assistant here at the museum shop. Uh, and I've also been a host. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you all today about ethical and sustainable buying. Uh, if you have any questions about ethical and sustainable buying while the video plays, please do enter them straight away. Don't uh, wait because we'd love to be able to get to them as soon as we come out of the video. So we'll see you back here in just a minute. Hi, I'm Matilda. Hi, I'm Martin. And we're part of the retail team at the museum shop. So here at the shop, we're really passionate about brands that are sustainable and ethical. And over the last few months while in lockdown, we've been doing a lot of research on ethical and sustainable brands and products. So we're really excited today to share with you some of those things. So let's go take a look. When we talk about buying ethically and sustainably, it's really important to consider brands that actually actively support and sustain cultures. Now, as much as ever, it's also important to support indigenous owned and operated businesses. So one great example of this that we have at the shop is Indigia, who make a range of products from delicious jams to their macadamia nut. Delicious. So they are not only an Indigenous owned and operated business, but they use traditional Indigenous harvesting practices, making them an environmentally and socially conscious choice. Another great brand that we also have in the shop at the moment is Better World Arts. Now the fantastic thing about Better World Arts is that they work with not only Indigenous artists, but traditional artisans from around the globe to produce their products. This pillowcase, for example, is produced in collaboration with Kashmiri artisans who use an intricate chain stitching method to produce this product. So this is a great example of a product that supports local cultures as well as international cultures. At the museum shop, we also really carefully consider how we source and sell Indigenous art products. So we do this by making sure we always work with certified art centres who are signatories to the Indigenous Art Code. This ensures that the artist and their community is fairly paid for the purchase of the painting, and also that the buyer hopefully has a cultural understanding when they purchase the painting. So what's really great is that when you purchase an artwork like this, it comes with a certificate of authenticity that proves its provenance, but also explains some of the origin and the story behind the work. And this is really important to consider as a buyer, so you can understand the link not only between the art and the artist, but also the artist and their culture. When people think of plastic products, they often think of a harmful, wasteful material that's bad for the environment. But this isn't always the case. Dinosaur Designs is a really well-known brand, but few people actually know how their products are made. They use a low-impact resin that's derived from a byproduct of the petroleum industry. So this makes their products not only beautiful, but sustainable. Of all the plastic waste consumed in Australia each year, only about 10% is actually recycled. But there are brands that are doing things to change this. Bellaroy, for example, currently produce a whole line of bags, just like this one, that are made entirely from recycled plastic bottles. 
As well as this, they've committed to making 90% of their woven products from sustainable natural or recycled materials by next year. In addition to this, Bellroy is also a certified B Corporation. That means they're committed to higher standards of ethical and sustainable practice. So thanks for coming on a journey through the museum shop with us today. We hope you've seen that there are many different ways to shop ethically. But it doesn't have to be a challenge and it doesn't have to be a struggle. It can actually be really enjoyable to discover all the ways to shop ethically. Thank you so much for taking us on that tour around uh, Jaya and the museum shop. Uh, just before we start jumping into questions, I've been prompted. Hi, Melbourne Zoo. Uh, hello from lockdown. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's really lovely to have you here. Uh, now, Matilda, can I get you to tell us a bit more about the Indigenous art code that you referenced in the video? Yeah, definitely. So the Indigenous art code was basically set up in 2009 by the um, Australian Art Centre and in collaboration with a whole bunch of industries and different art centres around Australia. And so what they were set up to do is basically three things. So firstly, to ensure the ethical trade of Indigenous art products to ensure the transparency of this process and to make sure that any um, disputes arising in the process were fairly um, resolved. If I could just um, add something there as well, Matilda. What's really great about uh, the Indigenous Art Code is, as you saw in the video, that uh, a lot of the artworks that we sell come with a certificate of provenance. And one of the things that the Art Code kind of seeks to do is really preserve that link between the artist, their artwork, and the buyer. Because when you purchase an artwork, really you're not just buying like an aesthetic object that looks nice on your wall, you're really buying kind of culture, like a living culture. Um, and by kind of, uh, you know, having that certificate, knowing the story as a buyer, you're kind of helping to kind of continue and preserve um, that culture. So I think that's something really important and we kind of encourage people, you know, when they come in and they're looking for artwork, we encourage them by saying, hey, you know, consider the story, you know, where this is from, consider the artist. So that's a really important part of the art code kind of project as well. Yeah. Um, actually, on that topic, uh, what are the questions that I should be asking when I'm buying an Indigenous painting to make sure that it's ethical? Yeah, that's a great question. Actually, the Indigenous Art Code has kind of three main, I guess you'd call them suggestions uh, for things like, for things buyers should think about when they're uh, purchasing artworks. And those are, who is the artist? Where are they from? And how are they being paid? And so those are kind of, I think, probably three of the most important aspects, uh, the three most important questions to consider. And they're things that you know, any gallery or art centre or, or any place that sells Indigenous artwork should be able to answer for you. So, yeah. The other thing, if I could just jump in there, is to make sure that any art centre or gallery that you're buying from is a signatory to the Indigenous Art Code. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind. So um, Wala Kalungu Art Centre, where we get um, the majority of our paintings from, they're a signatory to the Indigenous Art Code. The other thing there is to make sure that when you buy an artwork, it's coming with a certificate. So if you're buying an artwork or anything from a sculpture to a bowl that's really above the like $250 mark, it should be coming with a certificate that proves its provenance and gives you some inf information about the artist and where they're from. Uh, that might also be called a certificate of authenticity. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, depending on who you're buying from, yeah? Yeah. Um, now, uh, segueing out of the Indigenous uh, conversation for a little while. Uh, can I get you to tell me, Matilda, what is a certified B corporation? You mentioned that in the video, um, talking about the bags from I think it was Bellroy. Bellroy, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so Bellroy is uh, a B certified company. And what that means is that, um, so basically there's a, a non-for-profit organisation called B-Lab and what they do is essentially audit companies who come to them um, on the basis of their sustainable and ethical practices. So they'll take everything to account and then they'll give them a score on the basis of these practices and if they find them to be an outstanding ethical and sustainable supplier, they'll give them a B certificate. So if you're buying a product that has a B certification, you know that they're really at the top of their game in terms of ethical, sustainable and environmental practices. So in this case, uh, B is more than a passing grade. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty high grade. <laughs> uh, are these the only sustainable brands that we have in the shop, Mark? Yeah, I can talk about that. So um, actually, you know, what you saw in the video is really just, I think, a sample of a lot of the um, ethical and eco products that we have in our store. 
Uh, one of the other things that we have, one of the other brands actually that I'm wearing at the moment is Otto and Spike, which is an Australian clothing manufacturer. They produce like kind of scarves like these. I'm wearing socks with bikes on them that I really like. Um, and what's great about uh, Otto and Spike is that they are um, signatories to the, I think it's the Ethical Clothing Australia um, accreditation. That's a similar kind of thing to uh, the B Corporation. It basically ensures that for clothing manufacturers in Australia that there um, their are kind of ethical standards in place to ensure things like worker rights um, and ensure kind of responsibility in uh, the supply chain and that kind of thing. But that's only for Australian um, brands. Matilda, was there other things that you wanted to add as well? Yeah, so I think, you know, in the video we really tried to highlight the ways um, in which different brands can be kind of sustainable and ethical in different ways. So whether it be by being um, ethical manufacturers, being Australian made. We also stock a lot of brands that are eco products, so plastic alternatives, reusable cutlery and that kind of thing to reduce um, disposable waste. And then we have lots of products that are recyclable as well. So a great example is like this little koala that I have here who's a um, by Wild Republic and so he's actually entirely made out of recycled plastic bottles like everything even the filling on the inside so yeah we really try and support brands that are being innovative and doing different things to improve their sustainability. He's not just cuddly he's good for the environment. Exactly yeah. <laughs> Uh, we've got some questions starting to come in on the live stream, which is great. A uh, question from Mike. What products do you stock that relate to museum content? Um, I'm going to throw this one to you initially, Martin. Yeah. yeah, that's a great question. So we're always looking to kind of expand our range uh, with products related to museum content. For example, we always have products that kind of um, have kind of iconic flora and fauna from Australia in them. We also have products relating to things that are in the hall at the moment. We're actually sitting right next to you know, the iconic pink caravan and the FJ Holden that a lot of people grew up with in their childhood and we have a whole range of products related um, to those. Um, and we also have, every time that there's a new exhibition, we kind of um, create our own um, uh, range of products related to those exhibitions. So for example, Yuwarakuju uh, about the Canning Stock Route and also song lines. Um, we have a whole range of puzzles um, that we've uh, created ourselves. Matilda, was there other things as well? Yeah, so I think um, one thing we always try to keep in mind is like adapting and changing with the new things happening in the museum. So right now, for example, um, as you may know, the galleries are starting to reopen and we have the new Talking Black to History exhibition in the First Australians Gallery. Um, and so one of the things that's featured there is a dialysis chair from the Purple House. Um, and so in the shop at the moment, we're actually stocking a range of products from the Purple ha House, who are of course a charity who fund dialysis in remote communities. So we have a new range of products from them, such as like their bush balms and natural remedies and lip balms. So yeah, trying to reflect what's going on in the museum as it changes. It's a Fantastic enterprise, Purple House. Yeah, they do really, really incredible work. Uh, Shakri on the live stream would like to know what local brands do we shop now? I know this is a particular passion of yours, Martin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, it's really important to support local brands at this kind of uncertain time as it is. Um, and it's really important to support kind of local economies and people who are producing uh, products and artworks uh, here in Canberra. So we have so many. Um, producers here, probably too many to kind of go through all in one go, but probably uh, one of my favourites is Scott Lego, who does these kind of beautiful like photographic blocks and cards. He's a photographer based here in Canberra that kind of really like, I think encapsulates the beauty of Canberra. Um, so plenty of his stuff. Matilda, do you have a kind of favourite local product? Yeah, well, I think you can't really go past some of the homewares that we have. Like we have beautiful ceramics from um, Bison, beautiful anodized products from Fink as well, both local companies. Um, and there's of course like the delicious Jasper and Myrtle chocolate, which I'd highly recommend. Um, yeah, and all, all local products from Canberra, in the Canberra region. Beautiful. Uh, Philippa would like to know, oh, this is gonna be a very interesting question. How much money goes back to the indigenous artist? I might throw this one to you initially, Matilda. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's a really important question. And I think, as we said, um, one that you should always be asking when you're purchasing indigenous art. So it kind of varies depending on what the kind of product is. For one-off products like the paintings that we have here and bowls, individually crafted kind of things, 60% of the retail price goes back to the art centre and the artist and the rest of that money goes back into funding the museum. For products that are licensed, so like tea towels with licensed prints and that kind of thing, um, 
10% of the retail price of that product goes back to the artist. And those, um, those, that money is paid up front as well. So when we put in the order for say, a thousand tea towels, 10% of the price that we pay goes straight back to the artist. I'd just like to add just quickly as well, I think you know, this varies a lot from gallery to gallery or from uh, seller to seller. For example, some galleries sell on a consignment basis, which means that um, the artists or the art centres don't get paid until the art product is sold. So it's also something to kind of keep in mind. There's lots of kind of dimensions to this question. Yeah. Uh, Mike would like to know, why do you stock Indigenous products that are not made in Australia? Uh, I might throw this to you, Martin, because yeah. you talked about Better World Arts yep. in the video. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So Better World Arts is actually one of my favourites. So um, they, uh, a, lot of, a lot of their products are actually made outside of Australia, and that's for a really good reason, and that's because um, they collaborate between Indigenous artists, so for their designs, so for these cushion covers, for example, that you saw in the video, um, they collaborate with Kashmiri artists on the production of the actual um, cases. So that means they use traditional Kashmiri techniques, chain stitching, hand dyeing, but the designs are Indigenous. Uh, by Indigenous artists. And what's kind of great about this, it's, a, it's kind of like international multicultural collaboration. So that's you know, one of the reasons why we, we, um, uh, we stock Indigenous products that aren't made in Australia. Yeah. yeah, I think the thing there as well that's so special about Better World Arts is that it really makes it clear that it's not a clear black and white thing where Australian made is always the most ethical. So they really, um, they really prioritise protecting intellectual property. And so that means that they um, respect the intellectual property of the Indigenous artists who design the artworks and those artists are paid royalties on a fortnightly basis. But they also protect the intellectual property of the other Indigenous um, Indigenous crafters from around the world. So using like the traditional Kashmiri um, chain stitching technique, they're protecting their intellectual property as well in allowing um, those cultures to continue to mm. produce in their traditional ways. Cross-cultural collaboration. It's, exactly. Um, a fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> Better World is a fabulous initiative. Uh, oh, we've got a question from the studio. That means we've got somebody here live who has a question. Uh, what are you doing to support art centres and artists that are isolating at this time? Who would like to jump in on that one? Matilda, would you yeah, like to Yeah, I can ahead? start, yeah. definitely. Um, it's a great question because, um, as many people may know, the huge art fairs that are normally on around this time of the year in Cairns and Darwin are, of course, um, cancelled. Um, and that's quite tragic for a lot of artists because that's where they um, make a lot of their money selling their paintings. So um, this is where the products that we license, where artists are continually paid royalties, are so, so important. Because that means that these artists are continually getting an income from these products that are being sold. And so for example, with the Endeavour exhibition, we've actually licensed a whole bunch of um, artworks from the Hope Vale Art Centre to be produced in uh, tea towels, tote bags, and that kind of thing. And that means that these artists are going to be continuously being paid royalties over this difficult time. Um, and yeah, it's also a reminder to, uh, to support a company like Better World Arts who are continuously paying royalties. Ah, Helen would like to know what company makes the plush koala? Yeah, the plush koala was Wild Republic, Helen. Not a worry. Uh, where can I find out more about Indigenous art? That one's from the studio, so I might throw that one to you to start with, Martin. Yeah, I, I would probably say online there are a lot of great resources. We uh, look at the Indigenous uh, Art Code website. They've got a lot of information about um, purchasing um, Indigenous art. Also in the shop we have a whole range of um, books and resources on the history of Indigenous art. So for example, there's Indigenous art by Wally Kawana. There's the I get this right, the little red, yellow and black book, which is produced by IATSIS, which is a neighbour and kind of, uh, kind of sister organisation with the museum. Um, so yeah, if you're interested, please come to the shop and um, we'd be happy to show you some of the resources that we have. But online is a great place to start as well. Um, I think we're coming to the end of the live stream. We do have time for a few more questions if they're coming in. Uh, so please don't hold back. We would love to answer any and all questions that you have for us. Uh, now, if, if I could just jump in yeah. as well. Um, if anyone has any further questions about the shop and things that uh, we stock or supply or any other questions like that, um, we've just started our own shop Instagram. Um, so get on Instagram, we've had our first post, so yeah, if there, are any, if there are any further questions, things that you'd like to follow up on, um, please join us on Instagram. Yeah. 
Uh, so, Matilda, can I get you to tell me a little bit about Jara, which is the pop-up shop that we've got behind us? Yeah, definitely. So um, Jara is a pop-up store that we opened just after the end of the DreamWorks exhibition, so it would have been in February, I believe. Um, and basically, it's like a, a specialist kind of Indigenous art store. So we're selling a whole bunch of arts, um, like the canvases that you can see behind me, as well as other products from art centres around Australia. So we have some beautiful like um, ghost net bags, we have bush dyed um, products from scarves to tote bags to even earrings. Um, yeah, we're supporting a whole range of different different art centres from all around um, Australia. And so that's actually what the name Jara means. It, the Jara is the Ngunnawal word for um, bower bed. Um, and that's kind of the idea behind the shop is going around and like picking these things from various art centres and supporting um, Indigenous artists all over Australia. And if I could just add onto that um, as well, what's exciting about Jara is, as you can see um, from this dog here, it's not just <laughs> visual art, although visual art does make like paintings does make up a large kind of proportion of um, the art products sold by indigenous artists and art centres. If you come, in, come to Jara you can see that there's a whole variety of different kind of art objects like this dog is a beautiful example of that. There's also bowls and baskets and sculptures. Um, so yeah when you think indigenous art it's not you know it's such a diverse kind of field it's not just paintings. Yeah. Thank you both very much for joining us today here for Live at the Museum. It's been really lovely to have you. Um, do pop in to Jara and also jump onto the new Museum Shop Instagram at the Museum Shop. Uh, Jara is kind of our mini Indigenous art fair, given that we can't have Cairns and Darwin yeah. <laughs> like we normally would. Uh, now, the museum is open again and also the permanent galleries are starting to open once again as well so please jump on our website check what's open and what's not we'd love to have you here Endeavour Voyage the untold stories of Cook and the first Australians is currently on display in our temporary gallery it's a fantastic exhibition do come in and check it out and thank you so much for joining us before we head out, uh, I would like to leave you with a little preview of next week's program. We're going to be back out at our Mitchell repository uh, with conservator Nathan Farrow and curator Lena Hall talking about some of the secrets of the Queen's Daimler. So if you like cars or if you're a royalist or if you're just interested in history, uh, do tune in. We would love to see you again next week. Thanks so much. Today I'm sitting in front of a 1948 Daimler DE36 that was used in a royal tour of Queen Elizabeth II in 1954. Which the first time that a reigning monarch had visited Australia and that was Queen Elizabeth II. The conservation story behind this car is immense, but in short, it's a conservation project that bridged the fine line between restoration and pure conservation.